What is up, everybody? Your boy is back on the grind one more time, and I am just getting home from actually driving the Skylark here. And man, let me just say, this thing is running and drives awesome. I mean, there's no other word for it. I mean, this thing is riding phenomenal. I mean, ever since the first day I bought it, the thing was dialed in. I think the carburetor is tuned really good. I think it might need just a little bit bump in the idle because I do feel it might be idling just a little bit slow uh, when I'm at a stoplight or I come to a stop and the car is in gear. It might be idling a little low. I think it's right around five, 600 RPM, but it's not bad. It actually sounds pretty good because it kind of sounds a little choppy. I don't know if there's a little bit of a cam in it or not. I think my uncle who rebuilt the motor or had it rebuilt might have said he put a mild cam in it because it does sound like it but it's so smooth man there's no drone it has a Flowmaster 40s on it so it sounds good in the rear and if you go to the very back but in the front it is super quiet and that's what I love about it because I can just get in this thing let the top down and cruise and be totally comfortable with it if I want to get something a little bit more rowdy and fun but still smooth and comfortable then i could go uh in my caprice if i want something really 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 rowdy a lot of you guys don't know about my chevelle yet but that thing whoo and that thing is coming together my boy just sent me the um the not the rough draft but he's actually almost done with one door panel and man i'm telling y'all <laughs> man i'm telling you it is nice and but anyways uh this video is actually in regards to um some electric fans or a electric fan 16 inch that i bought for the skylark here and just unbox this real quick here so you guys can kind of see now this is just a cheap um amazon the reason why i am doing this because i'm actually going to keep my stock uh style fan that's in there right now the blade fan um and it has a shroud and it actually cools really good but um, i did notice when i go on cruises and stuff like that if i'm in traffic for too long temps will rise it's never overheated and what i've actually done is i've turned on the heat a little bit to kind of release some of that hot air and i'll give it a little bit of gas to kind of get the blade spinning a little bit faster get the rpms up so it'll cool a little bit and that's actually worked perfect but since i'm going to be doing uh, a couple more cruises this year i thought it would be nice to stick a fan in there on the back side of the radiator um, but it still be encased with the shroud and it'll be like a puller style fan so it'll just pull a lot of the hot air out so what I'm thinking about doing is actually hooking it up to a switch so that way if I'm in traffic I could just turn it on and then I'll have additional air uh, coming out it'll relieve some of those hot temps while I'm actually at a standstill so I don't have to worry about turning on the heat and you know raising the rpms up with the gas pedal and all that kind of stuff so let me go ahead and flip this camera around we'll do this unboxing and then another day we'll actually go wire it so it'll probably be all in the same video but i just wanted to do the unboxing today and show you guys all right guys so this is it here let me go ahead and unbox this thing so i cut this thing open all right so this is it here and this is the bike or something like that this is my coolant temp sensor right here again just ac delco brand if you guys are trying to run a dust 10 day to the dash you will need this one i actually took out the old one from the um the uh, junkyard the car that i got the uh, dash out of so i took that as well but you know my other sender the oil pressure sender was actually bad so i replaced that one with one from o'reilly's and it uh it is now working fine um so i'm not sure if the sender is bad on the oil one or not but I'm going to go ahead and try this one and see if it works. So, all right, what style is this one? Let's see here. Hopefully this doesn't fall because I have it set on top of the, my spray can bottles. All right. Oh, I guess so. This is the brand Maxon. I've never heard of that brand before, but that is the brand. I measured my radiator and my radiator is actually about 17 inches tall. Um, and, I'll, and, and it's probably, I don't know. 28 inches wide or something like that so this should fit in there just fine that's what i'm hoping on i wanted to get the biggest fan i could uh that'll fit um inside of that shroud uh, let me go ahead and pop the hood so i can kind of reference both all right you guys so this is the fan right here and it is exactly what i wanted it was slim and i wanted the slimmest fan that i could and i think I got that and this one right here. Um, this is actually leaves me more than enough room, hopefully, 
uh, to stick in between current fan and then the uh, radiator. So uh, I think this is about over 3000 CFM, I believe. It was just under 50 bucks shipped and it comes with all the hardware, everything you need. It actually comes with a harness and a relay. And so what it does is actually comes with a, with a little sending unit uh, that comes on at about 185, I believe. And then it shuts off about 195 or something like that. I gotta read the directions again. Everything's all wi already wired uh, for you as well. It comes with an adapter for your, um, for your uh, intake if needed. And that way then you can plug this sending unit into the uh, adapter or if you need it or not. It comes with a circuit breaker, relay, and all the wiring you need to run this thing. Uh, this looks like there might be some sort of adapters like for mounting and then obviously your zip tie or style locking um, um, anchors right there as well too. Uh, this is the part number right here i believe that's the tag on it obviously made in china so we'll see how it is my idea is to stick it uh in between here so right here mounted against the radiator and then that way i have a lot of room uh in there to place it so because the fan is actually you guys could probably see it right there so there's one of the blades so the fan is right here the radiator is here so i mean that is a good you know maybe seven inches or so and then obviously have more than enough room here so uh, I think the next steps would be just to take all this off and then go ahead and, and try to move that shroud try to start placing the fan in there I have already been uh, kind of hard at it here what I'm going to do since it doesn't have a cooling issue I mean look at this radiator you guys I mean super thick I don't know if that came factory like that or not but that's that's probably the thickest stock radiator on the old school I've ever seen before so uh, it cools really good that shroud is awesome and that fan works perfect so I never have had any cooling issues but I just did notice like when I went on my last cruise uh, car cruise you know we're stuck in traffic for quite some time and then you can kind of see kind of temps rise a little bit so I would have to put it in neutral bump the RPMs up uh, to kind of get it to cool a little better. So I thought if I could get a slim fan, hook it up to a switch, that way I can turn it on and off if needed, then that would be great. So that's where we're at with this. A uh, little bit of a challenge to try to get it mounted because what I'm doing is I'm using these little zip ties thing that they send you. Now, I don't necessarily like these because I don't like to stick them in between the radiator fins. I know it's probably okay as long as you do it safely and you know don't damage the fins i just like a little bit more cleaner look however i'm kind of thinking at some point i will probably have to replace this radiator i don't know how old it is so i'm just assuming maybe at some point i'll probably have to replace it i really hope not but being that you're not going to be able to see this fan anyway because it's going to be covered by the shroud um, then I'm okay with doing it like this as long as I do it, uh, you know, clean and, and safely and whatnot. So, and what's really cool about this, and again, this is just the Amazon brand, is it came with like these little feet. So you can also mount it from here, but you can also mount it from here. And I think this was like a lot cleaner and I liked it better. Um, and also it allowed me to have these little zip tie things sit flush against this versus against this since it didn't give me a whole lot of an edge there. So uh, I thought that was pretty slick. I was thinking, well, I'm not gonna be able to get these long little zip tie things in there in between this small space. I mean, like no way, but as you can see, I already got one in and, the, and another one over there. Now, what I did is this fan fits perfect, you guys. I mean, like from top to bottom, it has this little flat edge here. From edge to edge, because uh, it has a flat edge on both sides, it fits just perfect. I measured just perfect. Uh, what I did is kind of temporarily just placed it here. Uh, let's just say this uh, filter is the fan. And I placed it kind of like so. And then what I did was stuck these little zip ties in through the hole to mark my location. And then I just fed it through on the other end. And then I knew that I had to feed, you know, these ties directly in that location. I thought that was pretty slick and I thought that would work really good. So to get down 
far at the bottom was a little bit of a challenge, so I used these little thin, curved needle nose pliers. So man, that idea was really, really clutch. So uh, I would like to say I thought of it, but I actually saw it somewhere. I'm gonna go ahead and mount this up and make sure that's all secure and everything. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go with the wiring. And I just realized I have these parts sitting here and I didn't even talk about them. So all this really is right here is since I was taken off uh, the belts and all that. Well, I didn't have to take off the belts, but I'm changing out the uh, alternator, which is down here because I went with a higher amp alternator. I'm gonna leave it off for now because I'm actually, hopefully tomorrow, sometime in the next couple of days, I'm gonna clean this whole engine bay. And then I went ahead and checked the belts. They're not horrible. I've seen worse uh, from the outside. They don't look terrible. One, you can kind of see a little bit of cracking, but if you go underneath it, then you see it is definitely cracking pretty much everywhere. I've been thinking about the belts recently since I've been driving the car, just cause I don't know, it's just been on my mind. And usually when I think about things like that, I usually have to check it out and I just don't want anything to happen. And my hunch was right. Uh, they're a little bit old, so I might as well just go ahead and replace them. All right, what is up everybody? I am uh, back here with you guys a few hours later. Uh, it took me a little bit of time to really kind of figure out how I wanted to wire it and how the uh, pre-wired relay setup worked. So it was pretty much kind of what I thought. Uh, the sensor or sender, when it senses a certain temp, which I believe is 185, then it basically grounds the relay and then in turn cuts on the fan. So I was trying to use that same concept, but just want to switch so I could maybe somehow ground the switch or hook it up to a switch and then turn it on uh, manually. However, it wasn't that easy. Um, I had to figure out that in order for it to work, I had to have the ground hooked up to a power source, which would be the ground side on the battery, and then constant power from the, uh, the relay, the whole relay setup to the battery as well. And then I had to hook up the accessory wire to the switch. So instead of the ground going to the switch, I had to hook up the accessory wire to the switch. And then I had to hook up a 12 volt keyed power source and that's how I wanted it. So I only wanted it powered uh, when the car was on, not off because technically I'm not gonna be running the fan uh, when the car is off anyway. So, and if I do, then I'll just turn on the, the ignition. So, uh, so I got 12 volt keyed on, which is actually just hooked up to a 12 volt source underneath the dash accessory wire which is the white wire that's going back to the uh to the fan uh well to the relay and then in turn goes up to the fan and this is just the ground that i have just grounded to uh uh the uh car itself so so when this turns on so now the ignition is on car is on but not running but it's supplying power to the car now it's on but you see it still looks the same but when i have the the uh the switch on there's a led in here that tells me that the switch is on it has power and that will let me know the fan is on but also you can hear the fan running so this is supposed to be a 3000 cfm fan which is plenty for what i am doing considering that i'm going to still hook up the normal fan as well and uh, I have a ton of room in there and that fan is super slim. So let me go ahead and turn it off. So let me see. Oh no, the, and the switch isn't hot, so that's good. So what I might do is I might just buy a, uh, a 30 amp rated switch just in case since i already bought it i cut it open and everything i probably could take it back o'reilly's is really good and i spent enough money in there anyway they all know me in there so uh but i might just keep that as a backup now it's just going to be just final installation what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave everything off because 
tomorrow or sometime this week, I'm actually gonna clean this engine bay. I'm not gonna like totally detail or go all in on it. Uh, I just really just wanna kinda clean it up, uh, make things look a little bit more presentable, and I also want to attack this right here. So I'm gonna clean that up. All right, y'all, so here's kind of a before in the light here of what it looks like. So you can see years and years of grime on the carburetor. Just everywhere, you guys, this car's probably never ever been clean. So this is one cleaning and rinse off down and it probably looks worse than than uh what it did before at least on camera but you know it's just old i mean you can see how the inner fenders are, are faded uh i mean the firewall i mean it's just it's just old it's never been really 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 detailed and clean my main focus was just to get a lot of the dirt and grime off and you know this isn't you know I'm, i'll probably take this car to a shore too but it's not going to be anything that's going to win any trophies or anything like that uh, but we'll make it happen you guys so anyways i'm going to go ahead and uh blow dry this down i have my blow dryer there there i still got to go to o'reilly's to get the rest of my belt uh, my new belts came in so i gotta get those and you know, like little things like this over time, like here and there, I'll just probably just take them off and paint them just so they look a little bit more presentable. But that's kind of like a, you know, here and there job, uh, something that doesn't take too long to do. So anyways, let me go ahead and uh, blow that, dry this off. Again, I'll probably time lapse some of this and then I'll try it. Try to be sly. See if I can get him. Yeah, man, I think that thing's LS swapped. He must have put exhaust on it because that thing was way louder. Way, way louder. I'm talking like it sounded like when I LS swapped my car and I ran it with open headers. But uh, yeah, he has like a little spoiler kit, fender flare kit on it and everything. So I don't know if he was, if he's racing or not. I don't know if you saw him kind of like swerving side to side. So I don't know uh, if he's drifting or anything like that because the car is slammed. But anyways, just wanted to let y'all know I got a car guy next to me. All right, y'all, so I'm about to run to the store here real quick, but I did want to show you this rust neutralizer that I use, and it is awesome. I've been using it, shoot, ever since I was, man, maybe about 20 years old, I discovered it. So it's already neutralizing the rust, and it's already turning black. So what you're supposed to do is wait a full 24 hours for it to cure. Then you can actually sand it and then paint over it. Uh, but what I usually do is, because I don't want to sand it just to take off uh, any of the... Uh, the uh, substance that I use to neutralize it. So uh, you can actually primer it, then sand it, or you could just spray paint right over it. And that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go to the store right now, buy some uh, some uh, brake caliper enamel or spray paint, and then just paint right over it and then call it good. So, and then I'll pretty much be done with this. I've already kind of wiped it down somewhat, but when I go ahead and change these valve cover gaskets 
and uh, that's really it and then put everything back together then we should be good so and then I can put this back together I still got to clean the fan shroud which is over there reattach the normal fan and I'll put it back on but yeah y'all I mean it's, it's coming out great it is a few days later and I am out here attacking the car obviously uh, so a number of different things are going on here finally getting able to paint that booster man look how much better that thing looks already so I, I sprayed my rust neutralizer on it which is this stuff right here you guys works awesome sprays on clear and this is like before rust and then that would be after rust. so it actually turns it black so it's actually pretty dope almost can consider it a primer uh, but they uh, suggest that you can actually put a top coat or you can go primer first and put a top coat or however you want to do it so i just sprayed uh, brake caliper enamel just because since it's going to be near and by brake fluid um, if it leaks or something at the bottom, I just didn't want the, the, uh, paint to run or stain at all. So anyways, that's all good and it's drying now. Now I'm taking off the caliper. So, uh, again, I came to the source of where my leak was coming from. It was coming from the back rear bottom corner of the valve covers. Uh, these chrome valve covers, if you guys didn't know on these old school Chevys, they're are prone, prone to leak. Uh, they just don't seal very well. And obviously this is the only thing that I have right now. Uh, these cork style uh, gaskets, to me they are the best, but over time, uh, you know, they will get hard, especially if the car is not being driven. Uh, as you guys know, if you guys didn't know, when you're driving a car a lot and the fluid is moving around, it actually helps keeps the seals softened. Uh, but when it sits for a long time, probably as this car has, uh, who knows when the last time these were changed. I don't, I can't remember ever taking these out just because it's a process. You gotta take off the AC bracket and move it back. And just, you gotta take off a lot of things just to get to it. So, but since I had already had a lot of stuff off, I was like, well, what's another three bolts to take it off and then move it back. So anyways, got it off it was a little bit of a pain especially over there by the ac box that bottom corner always is a pain on these gm cars uh so what i think i might do is just go ahead and clean it up and then uh, i think i'm going to scuff this part right here uh just with some like really uh light grit uh sandpaper just to kind of roughen this up not not so much to take off the chrome but just to kind of give it give the gasket sealant a good tooth to kind of stick to and then uh, go ahead and put the gasket down because I got new gaskets they're sitting over there and then I can go ahead and put them down so I wanted to take off the hardest one first then I'm going to go ahead and take off this side I'm going to go ahead and wash them clean them up let them dry since it's sunny outside let them dry then I'll scuff them up probably just rinse them off again or wipe them down just so there's no contaminants that gets in the oil and then I'll go ahead and lay it down and go ahead and um and install it back in. So should should be, oh man, <laughs> I don't wanna jinx myself, but should be a fairly simple process if everything goes smoothly. Then uh, I have my new alternator, which is in this box right here. I just had to switch the pulleys and everything. So, cause I have a, a double pulley there. And this is a 140 amp alternator. And then also what I found too is so if I didn't mention this earlier, I've been having a, a, a voltage drop uh, when I turn the heat on inside the car. And I think I did mention this earlier. Uh, I noticed the volts drop from like 14 to like they at least drop a point or two. Now, I know this you're going to get somewhat of a drop, but this is pretty significant on my gauge that's on the digital dash. It actually drops from 14 to it almost looks like it's about maybe 12. Uh, volts. So what I thought I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll just get a new alternator. Who knows how old this one is? Although it seems to be charging really well because when I put a, a voltmeter to it, it actually says it was charging over 14 volts, like 14.1, 14.3, or something like that. So seems to be working very well. I just don't know how many amps that is. I'm assuming it's probably like, you know, a 100 amp alternator or something similar. So this is 140 amp. So I'm hoping that will help. But then when I started thinking about it more, I started looking at things. I was like, I don't see any ground straps on this engine at all. Uh, the only ground that I see is from the negative side of the battery to the front of the block, which is supposed to be there. So uh, usually how I do it, and usually you usually see a ground from the firewall to the block. Uh, however, I don't see one at all. I ran my hands back there. I looked, I climbed, even climbed over, sat on top of the engine kind of and looked down in there there was nothing down there so what i did is i went to o'reilly's and i got just two 10 or 12 gauge uh, 
uh, ground straps. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strap it, bolt it to the back of the block to the firewall, and then I also am gonna run one from the block to the frame as I don't see one to the frame either. So that's just how I do it. I go from the battery to the block, the block to the frame, and then the block to the uh, chassis. So that way it gives it a good solid ground all the way around because guys, grounds can be problematic. And a lot of times, a lot of times electrical issues do stem from bad grounds, especially on an old car. But I do know that this harness, it was replaced at some point uh, before I had the car. So it was like American Auto Wire, I believe. And so I know a good portion of the harness was replaced. I know that little resistor piece is new. Uh, I used to have trouble starting the car, so it looks like whoever had it uh, took it somewhere and they figured it out and they fixed it. Uh, so anyways, it starts on a dime, it starts great, but I'm just having that voltage drop, which kind of annoys me, especially if I wanna put a stereo or something like that in it. Uh, I don't want that issue. So hopefully with the new ground straps, alternator and all that will be good but what i'm going to do go ahead and do right now is go ahead and finish these up clean these up and then i'll chime back in here in a moment as you can see these are all clean now it's kind of a pain in the butt that's the only thing i don't like about the old school motors is they use you know the old school RTV and the gaskets and all that, LS motors, you know, they just have the, the gaskets that kind of just seal themselves to the block and wherever you got to put them. That's what's really nice about the, the new LS motors. These obviously, again, you got to use RTV or actually I use the right stuff, gasket maker. But anyways, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to put these on. Got these from O'Reilly's. I also picked up some of these as well. These are kind of little, uh, clamps that you put on uh, so because before and this is more than likely why it was leaking is there was only little bolts here and so uh, they probably just leaked over time and and uh, there wasn't any any way where it could really seal um, evenly around the uh, valve cover so I got some of these so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two of these like on the outsides and I'm gonna put this uh, the shorter one here on the middle and why I did that is because these only came in a set of four and they only had two at the store and being that they only come with four and I got six holes then I'd only be I'd be you know a few short so what I thought I was like well I'd buy those two put them on the outsides and then I'll put these shorter ones here uh, in the middle and I think I'd be okay with that so uh, the main thing is it was leaking on the rear cover back here in the corner well, at some point i'm probably just going to replace them anyway so i'm going to go ahead and time lapse this for you guys putting the gaskets on. all right y'all so i am getting ready to put this in in the uh valve covers bolted down like that before any valve covers bolted down with just bolts before but I guess so I gotta... oh no damn it of course these are gonna be too short. Gosh. Uh, and I just set everything on there. Man. Yep, damn it. These bolts are too short. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do this off camera and then I'll chime back in when it's all put together. All right, y'all, so I am here the next day <laughs> just to catch you up to speed. Uh, I've been working for about an hour or so. I had to run some errands. I had a really busy morning, but I have a light afternoon. So it's about 3.30 right now. I got a client at four, and then I'm gonna come back and, and probably finish this. So 
There's always problems, man, with these old cars. I mean, I'm sure you guys have heard it a thousand times, but there's always something. So I've gotten to the bottom of why there was only bolts holding down the valve covers and no uh, clamps. And what do I mean by clamps is these right here, these clamps. So as you guys know, if you're gonna know anything about old school cars, uh, on these valve covers, these clamps, are down there and they're actually anchored down by uh, bolts and it flattens them out, but it distributes uh, even pressure or more even pressure along uh, the valve cover. So, you know, it'll help minimize um, leaking and it'll help the gasket seal. Well, these weren't on there. And um, the reason being is because these and even this style, these little triangle style right here, they fit but they don't fit. So uh, they're actually contoured correctly to the valve cover. If you can see, there's a little, there's like a little indention there. And so they fit perfectly, kind of like how that one is right now. But I had to make that one fit. And when you first put it in uh, straight out of the package, it doesn't allow, this hole is so small and this is so fat. And for some reason, how the valve cover is made, it's not made uh, totally 100% correct to allow that bolt to go in straight. And so instead it was going in crooked because for one, this either hole is too small or this is too wide or a combination of this and the valve cover not being uh, correct. So what I had to do was try to tighten the bolts down on overnight because I had just put the gasket on the RTV hadn't even set yet. So I was like, damn, now it's not gonna set correctly and whatnot. So um, I just tightened them down as much as I could because these triangle ones uh, basically almost fit on there, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't totally, totally a flush fit, but they ended up kind of working. And also because I used those, somebody used some really short bolts and then with the, lock washers it made them basically bottom out from the get-go so they wouldn't even reach uh and so i was able to grab maybe one or two threads to kind of tighten them down as much as i could so i can get the gasket to seat right and mesh correctly to the valve cover it's just been a pain so i thought i was gonna have to return this and i was like well maybe i can hollow out the hole a little bit more so the uh, the bolt would clear. And that's basically what I did and that's basically what worked. I have uh, three of them on right now and uh, they are working perfect. So <laughs> this is what held me up the whole damn time. So if it wasn't for that, I'd probably be just about done or almost done, but instead I'm sitting here battling this. So, good, so let me go ahead and attack this and I'll try back. All right, y'all, it is the next day once again. Uh, who would have ever thought that it would have taken three days to do some damn valve covers? Man, it's time to piece this thing back together, alternator, belts, and whatnot, so I'll probably just go ahead and time lapse this and then uh, I'll chime back in.
pretty much all back together and I am ready to start it. All I gotta do is put the breather back on. I got new foam pads for my uh, for my breather that I have to put on as well. I did a little bit of cleaning up. Like there was, this was like really nasty here. As you can see, there's still some of the tag left on it, but you're not gonna be able to see it when I cover it up. Uh, just some other little things. Uh, but I'm happy with how it turned out. You know, like I said, it's not the show quality car. You know, I've still gotta do some touch-ups and things here and there, but once I put the control arms in and things like that, that should clean up a lot of other things. And then when I take the control arms out, these ones out, I'm gonna be able to clean the frame and put the new control arms in. So slowly but surely, it'll get there. Uh, I'm just the type that I'll just work and I'll do another task and I'll work again and I just try to get everything <laughs> that I can done as much as I can done, but um, I, really need to kind of stop doing that because that's when I am just out here for so long and then I start to feel all overwhelmed a little bit so I need to kind of slow down and just be like yo just do what you can small tasks at a time that's actually when I'm most efficient so anyways I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to start it up and just kind of see uh, I've done a lot actually so I got new belts all the way around new alternator 140 amp alternator i actually grounded the alternator as well that's what it called for in the direction so i grounded the alternator i don't think my old alternator was grounded so uh so i grounded this one uh clean up some of the wiring clean up the valve covers new valve cover gaskets new um uh pcv valve uh new uh climate control sensor so because my reading on my climate control on the dash is kind of funky so i went ahead and spent a little bit more and got an ac delco brand hopefully that'll respond a little bit better so um got that new ground straps so i got that big ground strap in the back this ground strap under here um, and the ground from the negative uh, to the battery which is already there uh, i also ran a two gauge wire all the way from the positive side of the battery all the way to the alternator so hopefully um any charging issues that i had uh are gone now so like i said when i used to turn on the the heater uh the voltage should drop about a about a, a volt or so so um hopefully that resolves that with the new alternator and everything so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the keys and i'm going to start her up and see how she sounds and see how she's running all right y'all we're going to give it a go So right now I have the car idling, the fan on, the heater on, and I wanted to see what the volts were at, and it only dropped 0.15. So before I had it on, it was right about 15, 14.99, and it only dropped very little. So it's safe to say that alternator is working. Um, I would assume that my ground straps that I added and this two gauge wire that runs from the positive all the way to the back of the alternator. The positive side of the alternator is also probably helping as well. So I'm really glad that I did that. Uh, it seems to be working just fine and charging great. If we go inside, you can see on the dash, it's right just right right under uh, 14 volts um, or it could be right at 14 volts you know this gauge you kind of gotta 
give a little bit. I think each bar um, on the different parts of the graph means something. Like for example, like one bar on the fuel gauge is like three gallons. So uh, you got to take that in consideration. There's only so many. There's only so much space and so many bars for um, the. Uh, the uh, whole gauge cluster system to read uh, correctly and accurately but um, it does seem that that all the gauges are working correctly uh, the, from what I found out these cars these engines let me go ahead and shut this off so from what I found out uh, these Buick engines are notorious for uh, reading low oil pressure. I guess that was kind of the one negative about these motors. Uh, they're notorious for having really low oil pressure. So I had wondered if my gauge wasn't working correctly because, or my sensor wasn't working correctly because my oil gauge on the digital dash cluster always kind of read, it seemed like sporadic. It would go up, then it would go down, it would go up to like, you know 30 psi then it would go back down to like 10. now uh i heard at idle these cars can actually go as low as like 10 psi or um or lower so uh you know i guess you gotta, gotta take it as is I, I think general rule of thumb for these is like for every thousand uh rpm you are supposed to have about uh 10 psi so um and that sounds about right because at idle, this car idles probably about mm, 600 to 700 RPM, uh, somewhere in there. And it registers uh, low on the oil pressure. So, but when it gradually goes up to like 2000, then it raises just a little bit. So I guess I'll just kind of have to take it as is. So, but yeah, y'all, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it. I think this is all good and ready to go the only thing i have to do now is put on those foam pads i have new foam padding that i'm going to put on you guys we are all done man Whew. man 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 that was a process crazy how it only starts with one thing which was me wanting to do the valve covers and then that turns into oh here let's change the belts let's put in grounds let's put a new power wire to the alternator i mean it just goes on and on oh let's put in a fan you know just like <laughs> one task can never be one task it always snowballs and goes into the next but with all that being said uh i am happy happy with it and you know it charges a lot better it seems to be running a lot better as well uh well it always ran good it just seems to be running a little bit more efficient uh, a little cleanup like these foam pads i mean look how much better that looks uh new filter this is looking way way better than before i mean obviously there's still some surface rust and just old old dirt and stuff that's really not probably never going to come off unless i you know really scrub it and then paint over it it's just not going to look you know totally great but like i said this thing i drive man i'm going to drive this thing and just enjoy it and you know take it to a show you know pop the hood maybe if not you know whatever it's probably not going to win any awards and i'm okay with that you know i just love this car uh, i'm just so happy and ecstatic to get it back man and uh man i can do all the things that i've ever wanted to do on it and i'm just i'm just man i'm just really just thrilled to get this thing back so anyways with that being said man we are done we are done so Man, if you guys like what you saw, go ahead and definitely leave a comment. Definitely hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. This thing is coming along. Anyways, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and call it. You guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, share, do all that good stuff, y'all. Stick with me. We got it. 
I'm out of here.